Modernizing applications can be a complicated situation for many folks. It's useful to have some best practices and tangible steps that can remove friction and yield some quick wins. We're now joined by Couchbase CTO, Ravi Mayaram, who will cover how organizations can approach application modernization, what role the cloud plays, and what you need to know about building a business case. Ravi, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you again. Very good to see you, thanks for having me, Dave. Yes, our pleasure. Uh, according to a recent Couchbase digital transformation survey that you guys ran, about 650 respondents, CIOs, CTOs, et cetera, the inertia of legacy technology held back, according to the respondents, 82% of enterprises from modernizing their portfolios in 2021. So I want to talk about the what and the why of modernization. Ravi, what does application modernization mean to you and why is it top of mind for organizations? Yeah, I think there have been multiple forces at work here for a while and they've all come to a tipping point with uh, the pandemic. And uh, uh, it's a combination of factors and uh, the legacy technologies were built for a different generation of applications. So it's a generational shift that we're undergoing. Uh, part of it is the, the consumption model, which is all cloud-based and pay as you go kind of stuff. The other is edge is in the middle of a lot of these conversations together with uh, the velocity variety um, of data that you have to actually sort of consume and results that you need to produce. These were all not what the sort of the, the infrastructure of old on which the applications were built on uh, uh, stand for. So the infrastructure of the substrate requires modernization uh, in order for the businesses to transform themselves. That's what's going on. We call it digital transformation from a technology perspective, but it's businesses that are transforming uh, the business models uh, in front of our eyes. Uh, you know, we have seen the media go from uh, set top boxes to streaming everywhere. Um, like that, every business e-commerce has changed uh, the way we sort of uh, do any business. And gaming has changed uh, the, the banking industry, the healthcare, everything is changing uh, in terms of the fundamental movement, if you, if you could uh, sort of say that, is to reach the consumer directly and sort of disintermediate the intermediaries. And in that process, the technologies that we had used to build the, the you know, last previous generation of applications no longer scale, no longer are nimble enough, uh, no longer cater to the modern, uh, the needs of the modern data and the infrastructure on which uh, we are standing up these uh, applications. So that's what's driving the modernization effort. And uh, in, in that, uh, you know, we have always started to say that a few years ago that data is the new oil. Um, so that plays a very critical role in how the data silos and infrastructure that enterprises have is what's holding them back. And uh, this whole effort is uh, in, in terms of modernizing that infrastructure uh, through the modern means of uh, uh, the cloud computing, uh, the modern serverless architectures and microservices and uh, the edge and the AI play, play an important role in this. So we're going to hear later from Amdocs uh, about their mm -hmm modernization and where Couchbase helps and fits, but I'd love to hear your perspective as to how Couchbase helps organizations modernize. Right, I think one of the uh, uh, fundamental things that has happened is that in the last 30, 40 odd years, the data infrastructure has sort of become uh, a, a sprawl. Uh, we had built uh, multiple systems, uh, uh, relational databases, caches, uh, search systems, analytical systems, uh, all uh, requiring for us to move the data uh, from one system to the other in order for you to get the value from those. And this is basically what we call as a data sprawl or database sprawl. And this leads to so many sort of uh, downstream effects all the way from uh, data not being available uh, at the time when the engagement, uh, the, when the customer is engaged to data governance, security, and all those issues because the threat surface area is wide. And now you're putting all this infrastructure on the modern uh, sort of cloud computing paradigm and the, and the costs are sort of ballooning. And uh, because those older infrastructures that were built, uh, when you deploy them on the cloud, uh, it it creates, it adds to the, uh, the complexity of the sprawl and on top of that, the cost of this. 
So uh, a system like Couchbase is what um, uh, simplifies the sprawl for uh, our customers. And it is built for the modern uh, sort of requirements of scale and performance, low latency and the flexibility uh, of being able to sort of not have to go through this whole sort of cycle of whenever you have to have a, a change in your application that touches your data, uh, that it, it actually creates a huge tumult in those upgrades and all those life cycle having to ca carry pagers. Uh, I mean, that doesn't, work anymore in these days of you know five nine up times and uh, uh, 24 7 365 availability of uh, your services uh, so in that area is where couchbase sort of helps uh, our customers to modernize uh, their sort of data infrastructure it uh, fuses um, the multiple technologies that were spread across uh, into one platform so it gives a a simpler programming paradigm. Uh, there is one way to scale, manage, administer, uh, patch, upgrade, all that mechanism is sort of not just thought through and automated, but it also sort of centralized. This uh, whole thing simplifies at the end of the day, uh, the total task of managing, uh, because the, the volume of data that you have to manage now is you know, uh, orders of magnitude, three to four orders of magnitude, more than uh, what it was just a few years ago. And uh, so in that, uh, containing the sprawl, uh, uh, agility of development uh, are, are sort of, and the simplicity of deployment and management are some of the key capabilities that uh, enterprises look to us to solve. And in that, bringing in all the way from cloud to multi-cloud to edge, uh, is how this sort of strategy evolves for enterprises. So square this circle for me, because in the panel we just had, a lot of agreement with what you just said, lift and shift of legacy platforms doesn't work. Uh, we're, it, were, it might work for the cloud vendor to get the data in the cloud, but it generally doesn't work for the customer. And you mentioned right. sprawl. We talked about this in the panel about, you know, data yeah. by its very nature is distributed. We talked about data mesh. There's a lot of skepticism around data mesh, but that, that's cool. And you mentioned edge. So yes. I'm interested in the clouds role here is the idea that you're actually putting all this stuff in one place. How does that fit with the edge? Maybe you could help us understand what you're thinking of that and where the cloud fits. Yes, um, you know, it's about uh, centralizing the data up to a point and decentralizing. It's in the magic of how you actually enable that. Um, uh, for example, just your traffic signal, your car, uh, or if you're on a cruise ship, each one is an edge they all generate petabytes of data and then you basically, uh, you, you can consume that. But if you're going to stream all this data to a centralized place like a cloud, that's, uh, you know, most of the data actually is not something that you're going to store forever. The, those are, you know, topical and that information is required at the edge. You should synthesize that information and take the noise from it and discard the signal. So that's where the edge, uh, typically the edge is not some, you know, personal device alone or, a, uh, or a IOT sensor sending data, that is also a, a sort of a one, one element of the edge. But the edge is about decentralizing the cloud, so to say. So you can have multi, your topologies of not having all your data sit in the cloud, centralized someplace behind five firewalls. So when your application tries to reach that, all the latency comes into play. So that's what you want to uh, decentralize and have the data available as close to the engagement of the data with the consumer of it. So in that is the decentralization strategy where you can have multiple topologies, a tree, a mesh, uh, however you choose to, so that you get to get the data closest. Um, it could be a mobile device. Uh, it could be a, a smaller deployment of a server. It could be a, a personal electronic device like a watch, or it could be all the way in an IoT gateway. These are the various sort of decentralization of the data that has to happen. So it's about moving the data fastest. It's almost like CDNing of the data is what, uh, sorry uh, for those, it's a um, content delivery networks is <laughs> what CDN stands for, where we used to actually move static content in the good old days. That's what made, made our web pages faster. Now we can actually move live data that much faster by using replication technology. So when you move the data towards towards the edge, what you're trying to do is bring that data closer uh, to the compute where it's actually happening. 
as opposed to keeping the data centralized someplace back in the cloud and server. And all your application logic is actually sitting on the device or on the edge. So you're constantly uh, shoveling the data from the cloud to the edge, from edge to the cloud at the time of compute, as opposed to having it available at the time of uh, um, the consumption of the data. That's where the paradigm uh, shift is actually happening. And uh, this basically is not about better user experience. It's also about backend networking and other costs that you can actually uh, gain from by not having to sort of repeatedly sort of shovel data back and forth. So that's the strategy that uh, enterprises are adopting now. This has become, so to say, core part of the architecture of modernization uh, uh, in terms of where everybody can see this has to move to. And uh, our edge and mobile product um, also plays a role and uh, that's one of the other elements, uh, aspects of it that customers to look us, uh, look to us for. So it's a balance and Couchbase can play in both places. The, a lot of the data, if I heard you correctly at the edge is ephemeral, but if I want to sure. do you know, AI inferencing in real time, I got to do it at the edge. I can't send it back to the cloud and, and, right. and, and do the modeling you know, post-process. That's not going to work. All right, let's talk about the business case. You know, we've, we've, yeah. we've hit on the what and the why, but you know, how does it get paid for? Companies sometimes struggle to plan for and budget appropriately for their outcomes. What yes. do customers need to know about, you know, how do they get this past the CFO's office for and the other business decision makers? I think there is an opportunity cost uh, with the sort of lack of modernization. Uh, if uh, people are doing their classic sort of, so to say IT style budgeting, uh, then it will just look like we have to modernize, uh, you know, some older infrastructure. It's not about that. It's about modernizing or making your business relevant uh, to uh, to the consumers because the way consumers uh, go about consuming your services now is very different from the way you had originally imagined and built for. And in that lies the the, the transformation. Uh, not to see this as a IT, uh, just as an IT infrastructure modernization, but more from the standpoint of business transformation and uh, the tooling that is required for this business transformation to be successful. So it requires the involvement of um, not leaving it to just, you know, uh, uh, IT oriented sort of uh, uh, thinking of modernizing, but from the standpoint of looking at the the, the business and what are the transformations that they need to, if they don't keep up with the Joneses, they, in this digital divide, they may find themselves on the sort of either the wrong side or in the chasm. So I think that mindset uh, that I was uh, sort of, in addition to sort of uh, IT pushing for this, uh, it's got to have a C-suite uh, sponsorship, understanding and uh, sort of championing of this then those initiatives will succeed because uh, it's not just a technology transformation, it is accompanied by business and sort of, so to say, cultural transformation inside the enterprise. Yeah, and it's interesting in the survey, it was very much IT you know, survey, I get that. Mm -hmm. and, and the IT pros, the CIOs, et cetera, felt that, 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 that the IT organization was largely responsible for the digital strategy. And I think that was largely a function of, we just came out of the, the pandemic or hopefully coming right. out of the pandemic. And so they had all these tactical needs, but now you're saying step back, align with the business, make sure the C-suite's involved and that's going right. to reduce the friction of, of getting this stuff paid for. Correct. And you know, the, uh, this observation was also there, if you, uh, you must have noticed that, you know, many uh, of these sort of transformative strategies, if you just leave it to like an IT thing, they end up being reactive. Uh, but the proactive strategies are the one that actually uh, succeed because they understand that this is a sort of enterprise transformation. It could be disruptive. Uh, it is what is required for the enterprise to get to the, uh, to the next level uh, or to be uh, in this, to be relevant in this sort of modern economy, if you would. So I think that is what, uh, what people are reacting to is the fact that this pandemic has pushed people to modernize quickly. And that may have happened as a reaction to the reality of the situation, but more and more, uh, uh, even among these strategies and more and more initiatives that people are taking 
they may have sort of a longer term sort of thinking in this. Uh, that requires the uh, definitely without RT, it's not going to succeed. And they are going to be in the middle and they will be uh, in the forefront of many technology decisions that they have to make. But having a, a C suite level sponsorship in addition to that, uh, with the impetus of what is the business transformation this is actually going to achieve, um, those you will see will succeed a lot more because otherwise you, we see that you know good good number of about 80 percent of these projects fail or 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 they suffer delays or scale back or never get started uh, because you know uh, uh, the understanding of what is the business value of it is perhaps not not clearly articulated instead it just becomes a a technology modernization conversation without the accompanying benefit. Yeah, got it. Okay, uh, you guys recently announced some updates to your platform. Can you run us through the the highlights? You know what the customers get and and how it relates to this conversation, modernizing application strategies. Yes, so uh, we will be uh, releasing our uh, Couchbase server seven dot one. And uh, that is what will be the sort of underneath platform for our the Couchbase uh, Capella, which is the our DBAS. Both uh, have exciting innovations um, that we would be putting out. Uh, let me just run through a few things uh, on the uh, uh, Couchbase server seven one because there are some uh, amazing uh, capabilities we have introduced there. We are really excited about the opportunities this brings Couchbase into play. Uh, first is we have a, a, a brand new storage engine that we put in there, which uh, significant, significantly uh, reduces the, uh, the cost of running Couchbase. Uh, with this capability, we can actually consume a lot less memory and that's, that is like a 10X improvement on this one. So from that standpoint, we are 10X more efficient in terms of resource consumption, the expensive memory oriented resource consumption. This now allows Couchbase to sort of not just cater to those high performance, um, you know, hyperscale scenarios that we are known for, but also the more, the classic disc oriented uh, applications, which are not that performance sensitive, but they're more cost sensitive. So that's a huge uh, step forward for Couchbase because there are a lot more now opportunities where sort of we become uh, that much more uh, cost efficient for enterprises to run. And this is something that uh, many enterprises have asked for. And we know uh, many more use cases where we would be more relevant with that uh, innovation. In This has been a, a sort of a long journey building storage engines is, uh, you know, uh, is a very difficult endeavor. And we took that on knowing that uh, what we can achieve here would be a game changer uh, for Couchbase and in terms of how uh, uh, the consolidation of multiple things that you can do in our platform just got this sort of boost of being able to do a lot more with a lot less resources. In addition to that, we have done uh, enhancements to our analytics service uh, with uh, the work that we have done there. Uh, it, it can sort of do a lot more um, uh, availability uh, of the of, of the analytic service, uh, which uh, strengthens the analytics side of the product, which now allows you to run analysis uh, on JSON uh, straight up without requiring the operational side of the uh, the database. So you can just simply do uh, straight off analytic stuff because it it, it can now uh, give you the higher availability and disaster recovery that you would want if you're going to depend on these uh, systems. With that, we are done over some uh, real good work with a Tableau integration, which makes it easy to visualize this. Um, uh, uh, and uh, one other important capability we introduce here is the um, on in the entire platform is what we call as user defined functions. This now allows us to write custom logic in JavaScript in the server, Couchbase server. This is this helps you write procedural logic in the middle of uh, SQL queries, which is a humongous capability that, you know, and the classical systems process now with that, we have closed the gap. If you know how to program to sort of classical relational systems, pretty much you have one-to-one -one equivalence of that uh, in Couchbase. So if you come from the good relational world, uh, it will be very easy a breeze for you to understand how to program in this modern NoSQL systems, which both supports um, uh, SQL as well as the classic uh, asset transaction capabilities. And last, uh, we expanded the support to ARM processors. 
And typically, uh, ARM processors at least save you a quarter of uh, your budget because of it being that much more uh, cost efficient in terms of uh, its operational and power capabilities. So with that, net-net uh, Couchbase server becomes a lot more um, uh, cost efficient and at the same time, it also in one fell swoop becomes that database server which can both handle your in-memory uh, capabilities, that, that speed and hyperscale, as well as uh, the classical use cases of being uh, disk, uh, disk oriented in, uh, classical relational database uh, use cases. Nice. So that, that, that rounds out our offering. It's been a long journey for us to get here from being the high performance uh, low latency system to uh, the classical database use cases. As yeah, well. I mean that's great. You got you got memory optimization. You mentioned the 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 ARM base. Now you're on that curve, which is great. Software companies love when you get cheaper, faster hardware. Uh, right. You're making it easy to speak the language of you know traditional stuff. So that's awesome. Um, you and I, you mentioned uh, Capella. You and I talked about uh, yes. at Couchbase Connects, C Capella. You've been moving hard with your DBAS strategy. How's it going? And then beyond these announcements, what's, what should we look for from Couchbase? You know, uh, our fundamental uh, mission is to make the developer experience uh, that much more easier, that much, uh, remove the, all the frictions that, uh, that has existed for developers to adopt Couchbase. And uh, the Capella strategy is to leverage the cloud so you have number one the ease of development just bring your browser start to learn develop even simple sample applications and deploy them from there you can scale and you can have production level deployments that whole journey of a developer along with the ability to sort of have your a you know metered billing and pay as you go uh, uh, pricing uh, so that it becomes easier for developers to sort of consume this and uh, show the value of what they can build here. That is our um, sort of journey of bringing it closer uh, to our developers and make it simpler for them to sort of uh, get started and build the, the mission critical applications that they have uh, trusted to build on Couchbase to become that much more simpler, faster and easier for them. So that's the journey. So that's the kind of announcements you will see coming out in Capella. And for that, this this seven one server is is the platform on which we we are sort of adding those capabilities to make a Capella that much easier for developers to adopt. Outstanding! You've been busy, and it looks like you got a lot ahead yes. of you. All right, we're going to have to leave it there, Ravi. Up next, we bring on the customer perspective with Amdocs. They've got a real world example of a modernization journey that they go through. They had to modernize legacy Oracle web logic infrastructure with a microservices architecture, and of course, Couchbase. Keep it right there. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>